walking up McGill Road as you do on a Saturday morning with the Super Elliots up for a Norton's TT, uh, which will be beautiful. So you can see having to do a bit of chasing on as they just roll past, they stop and buy shops somewhere, but they roll past Norton's I'm about, I mean, the Tower Hotel on McGill Road about 8.20, 8.30. So I am pretty much dead last. We've got Tory to the left, Phil in front, Austin in the green, and White Kid to the left. And then on the right, we have some Super Elliot guys. Dan is behind me. Uh, Louis, from, another guy from London, he is behind me, um, and we've got a pretty small bunch, about 10 riders or something, so you know, not great to be honest, like, and um, we're just, you know, not doing very many watts, so we just turn here on the left, I'm on, not in a great position, because I'm, um, because I'm on the left hand side of the road, so I, you know, I make sure, I sort of push my way through here, I'm like, I'm not going to be, I don't really want to be on the left hand side of the road, so I was just thinking here, like, I basically just want to keep moving up, so these guys weren't really feeling the effort, which is like 200 watts, so I don't really know why they weren't feeling 200 watts, but anyway, each their own, um, but yeah, so Tori goes around these guys, Louis goes around them, uh, he's got a very nice track with Don, uh, very lean bloke, and then um, we can see that guy's like, alright, yeah, that's, that's good. Dan on the left is moving up. He really wants to crack a good Norton's time because his, like, his Norton's time isn't really representative of how powerful he is. And uh, everyone, everyone in Adelaide is all, or it, like comes to Adelaide is always like, what's your Norton's time? But in my opinion, it's completely irrelevant because it's such a drafted climb. So you can see here, I'm on the left. Um, I'm pretty much last wheel now at the moment. I was gonna like sit at the back and then I was like, actually like, I sort of wanna just move up, make sure that if, there's a, if anyone goes to the front, absolutely hits it, uh, I'll be there. So you can see here, you know, it's a decent effort, but nothing crazy. So I'm just moving up about three hundred watts. So this is pretty chill. Phil's there, looking pretty relaxed to be honest. Tori's looking a bit more stressed, but not not too bad. Um, she got did a good time. I think she's sixty minutes or something. So this is odd. Um, you can see Dan is there as well. He's moved up. He's um, looking pretty relaxed. Everyone's pretty relaxed. Here. Like the watts are pretty low. Like let's be honest. Like normally, I've looked at some power from other people's files and sort of do maybe three fifty to four hundred for the first minute because everyone gets excited and surges up that real steep part. But today we're going real cash so, and. Um, Christian, you can see, is on the left. He's leaving Adelaide soon. I really wanted to get him a good PR, so I was like, right, let's move up here. So I just go around Phil, go around this guy. I just just keep moving up on these things, like you can see, pace starts to go up. So I just go around him and then slot in just to the left. It's a pretty friendly bunch ride, so it's not really like a race. So people are a lot more friendly, and they'll let you in in front of them. Uh, while in a race, I mean, I don't think I'd just be able to slot that easily in. Um, but you can see, like, the pace is, like, yeah, the wind was rubbish today. It was, like, it's a crosswind slash headwind for a lot of it. The air was really, like, muggy and not, not conducive to a fast time, unfortunately. Uh, so you can see the pace is coming off a bit. So I'm like, oh, all right, this is good. I'm, I'm happy here. You can see the speed's only 23 k's an hour at 5%. Like, that's not really much. But I think that was more, like, not necessarily this guy, because I don't think I have meant went that much faster for the climb, but more just, like, conditions weren't really conducive. Cadence is a little bit, little bit low. I think I only average about 80, 85 or 86. Which is not great. Need to need to practice a bit more on my cadence to just bring it up like up to 90. I think it'll just give me a bit more efficiency on the flat. I normally do that. But I think the climbs just seem to be grinding a bit more. Which I'm not really sure why I do that to be honest. Um, so anyway, I think Christian comes up here and he's like, I don't think I'm getting a PR man. And I was like, Well, you know what? I'm I don't really. I've, I'm here for a bit of time and like I'm probably not going to get like a super fast sub 13 time today or whatever. So which is ultimately my goal. I'm not sure if I can get it, but we will see. So I was like, all right, well, I'll have to sit on the front. So he sort of goes there. He's next to me now. And um, he's just talking. And then I'm like, the pace is getting below like 20 k's an hour. I'm like, come on, mate, let's go. And everyone's just taking it pretty chill. Like, no one looks on the limit. You can see by the body language and like how they're sitting on the bike. No one's like bobbing their head or like anything like that. So anyway, I'm like, all right, let's go. Light up to 500 skis. And it's like, all right, let's fucking go, man. So we go up to 25 k's an hour. And I just sit on the front. And I'm thinking at this point, like, what am I actually going to do? Like, do I want to lead the whole bunch up the whole way? Do I just want to do like a real solid five minute turn and then flip my elbow and see if anyone comes through? Um, and in which case, obviously the pacing is different because let's say I think I'm I'm gonna set a pace so that I don't really want to get dropped, then obviously it'll be a little bit lower because it means if anyone attacks, I want to be able to respond. But in reality, I was like, I think I'll just hold like a solid uh, a solid 340, 350 watts and just, just see how I feel. Um, sort of knowing that I could hold that probably for the rest of the climb. I ended up holding about 340 watts, 337 I think it was for 10 minutes, so that was a, that was a PR, so I'm quite happy about that. So obviously I could um, probably bump that up a couple watts extra if I am. Um, 
if I was trying more at the beginning and um, I just like doing more of a full gas effort um, than this because it, it was full gas but then it sort of wasn't it's like it didn't have the same motivation because like when you're at the front I'm like sorry I might tell you already pretty much that it's like it's not the most interesting TT because it's literally me on the front just setting the pace like yeah obviously it's just, like, nice to look at the numbers and it's always like oh 360 oh, 6 watts per kilo yeah all that stuff but you can see like 6 watts per kilo and we're going what like 18 k's an hour like you can obviously it's 6 percent but like come on the wind is just shocking like and people might be like oh i think your power meter is over reading i think you, you like way a bit much like maybe but like generally the, the wind it was like shit wind i mean it's like um because i mean i could i've compared to other other people's times on different clients and my power meter doesn't really seen that out like but guessing on there like what's my kilo and stuff like up steep car from stuff like cherry cherryville and stuff like where i finish is roughly where i should have done um so i don't think it's that out maybe five watts or something but on the, on this climb um yeah well, i guess we're up to 23 k's an hour now but the six watts per kilo i expect more like 24 25 maybe um and then obviously seven is more like 28 29 30 um obviously it depends on your weight if you weigh more if you're doing six watts per kilo 70 kilos then yeah you're gonna go 26 27 uh well for me i'm, I'm not gonna go that fast just because the actual the absolute power isn't that crazy i mean when you're going 23 k's now most of it most of the air resistance is um most of the resistance sorry is the wind not really the um the grain obviously the grain is is resistance but not really the same so normally like the pace here isn't crazy before the first hairpin if you watch any of like the other videos um about this i was like harley does quite a lot and like patrick's done done a couple and um, I think Velo Vegan's done a couple, so um, you want, like the pace is normally high but not crazy. And this, I was like, went around the hairpin, and normally it's like lit up here and everything fucking attacks. And I was like, looking back, and I was like, well, I can't really see that big of a bunch. Like, you know, I, I, I lit up to 470, but I don't really go any crazy. Like, and I sort of, and this part normally you click down a couple of gears because it's weird. Normally the wind is a bit assisted here. Like, obviously the gradient is a little bit steeper, but like pretty marginal. Um, marginally steeper but it just seems like the wind just wasn't there and i'm pretty much getting the same speed so now i'm on the front and like i'm trying to get relatively aero so i don't have like my hands in the drops but i have them on the hoods but sort of like 90 degrees between your elbow and your, your forearm so like in a decent aero position i generally find that's relatively comfortable for me to do that for quite a long time and i try and just stay as still like use my like really concentrate on trying to keep everything really still like obviously it doesn't happen because i, I actually like am quite unstable on the bike when i'm really going full gas like when i'm going not 100 percent and like i know people are watching me that i really try and like stay as still as possible but if i know that i'm just going absolute full gas like on a tt or like something like this where i sort of care about the time but i mainly want to get christian a good time so like if people overtake me like yeah that this doesn't really matter that much like if i wanted to get a better time today or whatever or if i wanted to be at the top of the mountain i would have just sang and not done a single effort but today i was like well it's christian's last time and like i just want to test myself see what numbers i can do like it's a bit more fun doing that than just like sitting in the bunch and then doing like a 600 800 watt sprint at the end of me like yeah i, I finished first but you finish in time like 15 minutes or something i mean it's, it's not that impressive um it's better just to do some work on the front really uh, maybe i should have pulled off earlier and people behind me like um dan was like oh maybe i, I should have done work but i didn't feel great it's like well yeah but like i wasn't going crazy like i'm setting a decent tempo like 330 into 360 watts on the front but like it's not absolutely lighting it up i mean especially because the draft you're getting a good draft like phil weighs pretty similar weight to me maybe a little bit heavier i think he says he's about 64 and i'm like 60 but obviously like there's a bit of tolerance either way his bike weighs about the same as mine as well he was doing 300 watts uh, for the whole segment i did about 330 325 i think because the beginning part was really low um because we were just like chilling um and that's like 25 watts plus obviously with slightly different weights but even so that's like pretty insane difference just because of the drafting so i'd say for sure um the drafting helps a lot as on this climb especially if it's headwind obviously tailwind is okay as big a difference but the headwind is really where you can just draft and save a lot of energy that's why on this like if you were if it was really like an aggressive bunch you wouldn't want to do this long on the front or you wouldn't want to do this power because if someone attacked normally the, the, like, the way you want to go on the front is that if someone attacks you can respond that's how hard you should go on the front so for me i probably could respond now but as it gets later and later in i'm killing myself more and more and just burning more and more matches so this is a real solid effort now like you can see the watts have dropped and you'll see the main way you can tell off power data when people are starting to like 
fade is because it gets really stochastic and really variable. So people will be doing 280, then they'll be doing 350, then like, you know, like it's really hot. It gets a lot harder to hold a consistent power. I'm not sure the pros, because I haven't really done much analysis into that, maybe they're better at holding it. But I definitely know among like amateurs, that's a real telltale sign of people dying. Like, because they just can't keep this constant power. That guy's giving me a bit of abuse, and I was like, man, I actually don't care. I'm, I'm just getting full gas up here. And you can see we're now only doing five watts per kilo, but we've got a bit of a tail slash cross, so we're up to 22 k's an hour, which is good. Um, this climb, it's it's weird the gearing on it. Like, um, I was I have a 5236, and uh, Phil, the other guy, had a 5034, and he was in the big ring the whole time. He is a smaller cassette, and he's a 23, but I think that this climb, it really helps to have the 50, 52, which might sound weird, just because you can stay in the big ring, and it's just slightly more efficient, and at the end, when it sort of gets only to 3%, and everyone's spreading, it's a lot better. Um, but obviously, at 52, it's just too big at the speeds we're going. Like, if we're going 25, 26, then yeah, maybe, but even then, like, at points where you slow down, your cadence would then start to drop, and, like, it'll be a lot more laboring. But this, when you're in a 36, it's a lot better, but obviously, mechanically, it's slightly less efficient, because the chain ring isn't as big, so we'd be using a smaller chain, uh, smaller chain ring in the front and the, and the back. Uh, but it's mainly just at the end, if someone attacks, you really, you'd have to change gear. Um, and then as soon as you're changing gear, someone's clever, they'll see your left hand like flicking to change gear. And then they attack just at that point. And then that's one way they can really make a difference. So you can see again, we go around the corner and like a bit of an acceleration, but not really. And at this point, I sort of like can hear Christian breathing behind me. I think he gets dropped around here or so. Um, maybe a little bit longer, I'm not 100% sure. I was gonna overlay the sort of comparison, but then it's, it's just, that ends up taking quite a long time. But I think I, I will do this on a, a quick, a soon, oh, fuck's sake. I will do it sooner on a video because I think it adds quite a lot to the, um, or to you because you weren't there. And even me, like, I watched it with Louis who got dropped eventually. Um, and it's just quite interesting because I have no idea because I don't have a mirror on my bike and I don't really look around. I was just go, pretty much doing a TT now, like an actual TT, just as hard as I could go. Um, and just like not really caring. Like I did, like I know I rode quite a lot of people just off my wheel, like without even doing anything. But I knew like if you're strong, like Phil and Dan, like, I mean, I'd have to be doing some serious power in order to drop them. Uh, probably like close to, if I held 360 watts the whole time, then maybe I might have dropped them because just like they couldn't do, like the, the power they do maybe is 320, 330, and maybe what for Phil, um, and then maybe he might get dropped. But even then, like the draft is quite a big thing. So I sort of, I sort of realized here, like, oh, what's gonna happen? Um, I don't really know. But anyway, so basically a lot of people got dropped off, but I had no idea, so that's what I was saying before. Um, so it's sort of hard. I'm out of the saddle here, just trying to rock the bike a little bit. And then I was like, oh shit, I'm watching. The viewers don't really like it when, when I do this. Um, but you know, I, I wasn't really thinking that much about it. Um, but yeah, it's quite good to have it sometimes, just because you can see where people get dropped and like how much damage I'm doing. Because at the moment you're just like, sick like he could be inventing this he's actually like everyone else was didn't know there was a tt and he's just gone off on his own but you'll see in the final couple of kilometers that that's a little bit different so we're coming to near the end i'd say we're probably last 1k one and a half k maybe uh you turn down this corner and moriad gorge is beautiful on the left hand side of the road and seeing we're pretty much just gassing everyone i mean it's like no one's really coming close so one person was like car back and then <laughs> they just realized it was the train because we were going so fast which was pretty beautiful i think there was actually a car behind us to be fair but i didn't realize that at that point i was like oh shit we must be flying like if they think we're a car um you can see i'm really bringing up now to 400 and then it goes down to 300 you can see i'm really struggling here i'm hard and starting to go up but there was toy um He's a real promising young lad, he's like 15 years old. I should do some videos, more videos of him, he's super fast. I think his PR is pretty similar to mine up more, it's like 4, 1450 or something, but um, I bet he did it solo, but yeah, I think he probably better win than I did. <laughs> uh, but you can see here, we're, I'm trying to bring it up now, closer to 360 to 400. I'm really just trying to concentrate on the effort and just like think about like, think about not much, just like, just do the process. Like that's the thing, you know what you need to do. So you can hear, see, here's old Cervelo Man, and Cervelo Man gets, gets swamped when we go around him. And there wasn't a super busy bunch today. Like you can see there are more cyclists than cars. I think we saw more World Tour pros as in like women's World Tour riders than uh, <laughs> than, than cars this, like this morning. Because um, we, we had there was a bunch of five or six. That see again, these guys, wham, cheerio. And this is where it starts to get, this is where I think I switched into the big ring just now because I realized
gorillas are getting up to 28 and 27 k's an hour and that's really really good so dan goes away straight away around me and i really light it up to 500 but it wasn't a crazy attack it was more like a, just a general increase of the pace which was weird so now here i'm really trying to hold the wheel and i'm getting up to 35 k's now so you get a real good draft here so you can see i'm just a little bit behind the wheel but i'm really trying here and you can see the numbers are going down and then I'm still struggling, getting up to 445, and this is when I'm like, oh, I can't really be bothered, but I should have pushed a bit harder. And you can see Dan's still on the front, but I'm not really sure what he's doing. He hasn't done an attack, he's just sort of leading Phil out, and then Phil's like, cheerio, Dan, I'm going to get the line. So he just does a little little sprint round. Dan's like, oh, I can't really be bothered. <laughs> Sits back down in the saddle. Phil takes it with a time about 14.15, I believe, and we did about 14.30 something. And Dan did probably do like 14.20, I did like 14.30. You can see here, uh, the watts are really fading. I'm just like, quite tired. Tired and like ah, that's it. So that was a not really an eventful Norton's TT. A bit dead to be honest. Like I was just on the front and just dragged everyone up there pretty much, and like a lot of people got dropped or whatever, which is a bit sad. But um, anyway, hopefully we'll probably be that back next Saturday. Hopefully we'll get some more guest appearances from other people who will be there. Hopefully we'll get some solid riders from Super Eddies. It was a bit rainy, so maybe people couldn't be bothered to come. I don't really know. But it was it was a pretty poor turnout to be honest and you can see phil's phil's hurting dan's hurting i'm hurting quite a lot like i think i could have gone harder <sighs> i always say that but maybe i could have done maybe i couldn't but anyway solid ride very enjoyable i really like doing these tts and afterwards i just did some tempo efforts because uh, that's what actually was <laughs> that was my actual training um and this is just like for, for laughs um but it's good training just seeing where you are so i did like 325 for 15 minutes and my my 20 minute power is only 314 so i feel like i could probably do 320 for 20 minutes if i actually paced it properly maybe or if that had continued i'm not really sure um but anyway cheers for watching and i'll i'll see you in the next vid